Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, back here again doing another video. And today we're gonna to be doing Halloween. We're gonna be painting this pumpkin birdhouse. Isn't it adorable? Okay. Um, now, a lot of you have picked up the kits at the library and uh, some of you picked up kits from me. And I went ahead and I started by base coating the entire piece in the brown. And that's so I don't bore you with watching me put the brown on the piece. Um, so you can pause this, go ahead and put the brown on the entire piece. You just wanna watch for white spots. It doesn't matter that you can see through the color. See, it's not solid, it's okay. You're going to be putting all these other beautiful colors over the piece. So one nice coat. And even if you see a white spot after you start dry brushing the piece, you can always take a little brush and go back and touch it up. Because when you dry brush, the color in the crevices is going to stay pretty much the brown in a lot of areas. So if you saw a white spot in this little crevice, it would show very obviously. So you should go back and touch that up, okay? But um, Halloween to me is just about as popular as Christmas is, and the pieces that they come out with are magnificent. This happens to be a poured piece from Clay Magic, uh, Clay Magic Molds. It's, um, the detail is gorgeous. You don't get as much of this detail on pieces that you buy in bisque. Although I have to say, Gare is doing a fantastic job on what they are uh, putting out there. The pieces are really beautiful, but this happens to be a poured piece. So um, I don't have a lot of them. I, I, if, I need, if I need one, if somebody needs one, I can pour it for you, but uh, I don't do these in quantities at many libraries. So you are very lucky to have gotten this one because I'm only doing this with one library. So those of you who have picked up the kits. Um, all right, so I'm going to start by doing orange. Uh, you have the orange in your kits. If not, you can purchase paints anywhere, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, uh, Blix from what I understand, and Amazon. I start with the orange. Now, I start with the bigger areas and I also start with the background areas because when I dry brush, if it gets on the other areas, it's okay because you will eventually be putting colors over them. So I start with the main area. I don't worry about it getting on the windows or anywhere else or on the flowers. I start with a big area. I use dry brushing brushes, which are, I believe, ox hair brushes. So always have a paper towel available because when you dry brush, no water. You do not use water except to wash your brush that you did with the brown. And then you go to a dry brushing brush and you start with the orange. So this is a orange rust from Mako. Mako's orange rust, which I love their colors. And you put a little bit of paint in the brush and you work it out on the paper towel. Now true dry brushing, you should not see a wet look when you put it on. If it's very wet as you're putting it on, you have too much paint in the brush. Don't just do this work the colors into the hairs of the brush. Now it's time consuming. It does take three, four, five coats to achieve the proper application of the paint. If you do it in one or two applications, you're gonna have a painted wet look. So I prefer very dry. Okay, and now that's a little wet going on. So it could even be drier. Now I'm going across the grain, which means I'm going horizontally when the grain is going vertically. So that's so I don't fill in all the brown in the crevices. But if you get lines and you see painted, you know, dry brushed lines going across, kind of crisscross it and blend them in. Now dry brushing is not keeping your brush on the surface, it's lifting your brush up off the surface. So I'm doing it fast, but my brush is always coming up off the surface. And see what I mean? I don't care if I get it on the roof because the green will cover it. And even when you think there's nothing in the brush, twist your brush around, use the other side of your brush. Now this is, there's nothing in this brush, but you will see if I keep doing this, this is the real way of dry brushing is to have it go on very, very dusty looking. See the difference in what I did down here and what I did up here? I mean, you can do this a little bit more in the brush, but true dry brushing is almost seeing a powder forming on the table as you're working. Okay, so now I'm gonna be putting a little bit more in the brush. And again, I just put a dot in the brush. I blend it into the hairs of the brush in all directions. Less is better. You can always go back and you can put more on. Oh, I just missed a whole big brown spot under there. So you see, you do have to go back and touch up. 
Okay. So again, against the grain. You know, this has a lot less in the brush than the first time around. But this is the real way you should dry brush. It does get a little hard on your wrists and your hands. I just take a break in between, but that's the real way of dry brushing. So every time, I don't just do this. I work it into the hairs of the brush, the color. I'm gonna come around the front. And I'm not gonna worry about the door or the mushroom right now. I'm just trying to get my color on there, the background color. So I'll get it nicer. Now this is a little wetter the way I'm putting this on. Now you see why I do the background first because it's getting all over everything, but it's okay. It's okay, it will cover. As long as you don't put it on heavy. All right, so that's, that's basically one coat. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna show you what a second coat will do. Throw the paint in the brush again. Take it out, start with a light hand. Someone once told me they should be able to pull the brush out of my hand when I first start, because if you're holding it very tight, you're gonna press harder on the piece. So hold it very lightly in your hand. Another good point is to work away from what you don't want it to get on. So if you don't want it to get on here, we work away from that. We don't work into it. Same thing on this side. Instead of going right across, you work away from the mushroom. Start up against it and pull away from it. So you work toward the center. And again, up here, you would go down. Okay, so this is the second coat. Now, I did a lot more coats on mine. You can see my color is so much more vivid. I also have other colors on there too, so don't judge it yet. I use this one brush load to do the whole back. I'm gonna go around the front, put a little bit more paint in the brush. Start out with a light hand. Now, I'm not going to do that many more coats, but I want you to get the idea. You keep doing it until you are happy with the color that you have on there. Okay, but just remember, I do have yellow and red on it also. So my color here is not exactly that color because that has so much more color on it. All right, so I'm going to stop now, even though it's pretty dark. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow in my brush, and that will lighten the orange. So I'm going to stick a little bit of yellow into my palette. And I'm not taking the orange out of the brush. And remember, you, if you're using the same brush, you do not wash the brush between colors. You use the next color to clean out the previous color out of your brush. I don't want to clean out the orange completely. I want to work with a combination of both. So I'm just going to be lightening the orange that I'm using. And it'll be a slow uh, progression, slow amount, you know, that when you start seeing it, but you do see it. And each time you put the yellow in the brush, you'll get rid of more of the orange. And if it gets to be too much yellow in the brush, I do a dab of the yellow and a dab of the orange in the brush together. So I'll just keep doing the yellow. And now I'm getting yellow. See the yellow that I'm getting there? I don't really want all that yellow. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the orange and the yellow in the brush together. It's playing. It's hard to tell you exactly what I did. A lot of dipping. You hardly use any paint, even though you think you're wasting a lot on the paper towel. You're really not. You're, you're not using that much paint when you're doing dry brushing. Okay, you can see I put it on a little wetter down here, but it's now it's starting to get a little bit lighter also. And I keep working with the yellow and the orange together until I'm happy again with the way the color comes out. And you can see it's still much lighter on here. So a little bit more yellow in the brush, a little bit of orange. You can use your paper towel as a guide too. You can kind of see the color that you'll be getting there. Okay, see it's starting to get a little lighter up there now. Eventually I'm gonna to go to straight yellow at the top because I always feel like the sun hits these vegetables. I guess pumpkin is a vegetable. 
on the top here, so I do a little highlight of yellow on the top. May not be right, but that's my interpretation. And every time you do something, like I'm doing this one, it may, never, it may not come out exactly like that one, and that's okay. Now I'm just doing yellow. So because I have so much yellow in the brush, I'm starting at the very top because I know I want a little bit more yellow up there. But then I'm gonna lighten the whole thing. I guess I should do a little bit on the front also. It's getting there. This is much lighter, but you know, like I said, every time you do something, it comes out different. I have a little bit too much yellow in my brush, so I'm going to pick up some of the orange and blend it in. See how nice and light that got up there? So now that's looking more like this one. Turn this around so you can see the front. It's such a pretty piece. The detail is beautiful on it. I try to avoid the other pieces, but it's getting on it. And eventually, eventually you have to be neat. Eventually. But when I'm doing the big background area, I don't worry so much about that because I know the other colors will cover it. All right, so I'm not going to be as exacting with this. You can play with it and get it to your desired look. I am gonna take a little bit more yellow out though and highlight the top. First, I'm gonna go back and make this a little brighter. Okay, so that's getting a little brighter. Now, just the yellow I did at the very top here. You can see it's just very, very little at the top on the front. a little heavier there so all I do is go back and put a little orange in the brush and blend it in just blend it back in again and you could put some streaks of a little bit of orange coming you know yellow I'm sorry going down the piece just to brighten it up that's what I mean about playing I play a lot and it's very hard to tell you exactly what I did but you know, it's, it's your piece and it's your eye and it's when you want to stop, you stop. It's, it's up to how bright you want to make it. Now I do the same thing with the red, but not as much with the red. I'm just going to take a little bit of red here. In the same brush again, pick up a little bit of red, very little. Now really take the red out of your brush and just highlight a little bit, very lightly. I don't know if you could see that little bit of red I just put right here. Just very, very little. I just do little highlights of the red. And if I don't like it, I blend it in with my fingers. While it's still wet, you can kind of blend it. The little ladybug is going to be red anyway. Everything that you add to it, it shouldn't be obviously in your face. It should be subtle and just add to the finished look. Okay, so you see there is a little bit of red in there. All right, and like I said, no two will look alike, but I'm gonna stop on that now because I think I've reached a point where you get what I'm talking about. So um, I'm gonna start, if you don't have a lot of dry brushing brushes, and like I have a lot of them here, start with your lightest color. So this way you could work with the same brush and just work to your darker colors. So I'm gonna start with the white, and I put a little bit of white on the edge of this flower. I think that's the only place I have white. Well, maybe I have it over the blue also here on the edge of that, but I did the blue first. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white. I have another brush here. And I, when I first start out, I always do it twice just to condition the brush. And I'm going to put some, well, actually I could have put the white after, but I'll tip some white. Now on the flower, I'm taking it from the edge. See what I'm doing? I'm going from the edge down on the outer edge into the flower. So now this is this where it's important. This is where it's important to follow what I said before. Dry brush 
into the center of an item. You don't want to go across and get it on the pumpkin or on anything else. So you dry brush from the outside edge in. So my brush is always turning. And I might as well do the other one while I'm at it. If I need more white after, I will do it. So where is the other one? Oh, this one here. Okay, so on this one, I can put a little bit of white on the tip. Again, come in from the edge. It's hard to work upside down. Really, this should have been put on top of the color, but I wanted you to really get the idea of how you put it on so I, we can always go over it again. Okay, there's the white. So now I'll go to the blue. And of course, I don't have the blue here. Just excuse me one second. Let me just grab a bottle of blue over here. I thought I had the blue there. There it is. Oh, I do have the blue here. Little did I know. I have so many paints out here that this, this took a lot of colors that I couldn't even see what I had here. So I'm going to be using a little bit of blue. I'm going to do the flowers, the one flower, and I think around the door and the top of the mushroom. And the top of the mushroom is turquoise. Okay, so I believe I did the blue here, and I did it on the flower, and I did it on the body of the snail. Okay, so you take it out of the brush. I'm using the same brush I used for white. And I put it on this flower. Now on the flower, instead of coming in from the edge or down, I'm gonna go across because I wanna keep the brown showing in the crevices. See how the brown is still showing in the crevices? If I went straight down, I'm gonna be filling in the crevices. So again, I'm gonna do it a second time. Let me do the back. I'm gonna do this again. If you do it a second and third time, you'll see a big difference in it. And I probably will redo the white. Okay, I'll give you the idea. All right, see it there? Maybe one more time. Each time you do it, if you do it properly, it makes the color more vivid. And it's not a painted look. You will keep that dry brush look. I think three times is the charm if you do it properly. And I forgot this side here. Yeah, you have a back of the flower on both sides, this side and this side. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing... What do I have done? I have these sides of the door. And you know what? This is just a guide. You can do whatever you'd like. Now on this, it's a flat surface to dry brush on. So if you really have all the paint out of your brush properly, you can just do it up and down, like just go up and down with it. Turn the brush around, use the other side of the brush, and I'm coming in or I'm going up and down. And you can do that a couple of times. I'll just do it the once so you get the idea. And then with the same brush, I'm not even putting more paint in the brush, I'm doing the snail's body because I can get it on his shell now because I'll be going over the shell after with the purple. And don't forget it goes around, his body goes around underneath his shell in the back too. Sometimes you just do things, and if you miss it by process of elimination, when you're finished, you can go back. All right, I'm not going to be doing these two and three times, but you could keep doing it until you're happy with the way the color comes out. So I'm finished with the blue. I'm going to close that up. And I think because I like to keep the same color family in the brush, I'm going to go to the turquoise and do... Oops. My goodness, that's a hard one. I, I'm just working out of the caps, but you have your pods. And if you don't and you have your paint in bottles, the little bit in the uh, top of the cap is fine now. So now I'm gonna go to the turquoise, do it twice to work out the blue out of the brush. And I believe I only did, oh, I did that on the welcome in the front here. Well, that one, I wrote the word welcome with a marker because it's not on there. I don't know if you could see it, that angle. Okay, so you could do that after you sprayed and after you're finished with it. You can do that with a marker. Now, sometimes on a surface that is not 
Uh, now with the, with the yellow dots, by the way, go right over with the turquoise and then the dots can be put on with the back end of your brush later on. Um, when I have a flat surface that's very hard to dry brush, like these areas here on the door, sometimes I'll tap it, I'll pat it on. Depends on the look you want. You could do, do, do this. It's a little bit of a pat. Okay, turn the brush around, tap it on. It accumulates the color a lot faster also. So it's really not like a dry brush would be going across this way. You just pat it on and it, it builds up the color faster too. It does get a little wetter, so you might have to just wait a little bit more to do it, you know, a little bit more time, give it for it to dry before you do a second coat. You see how the color accumulates a little faster on a on a flat surface that doesn't have crevices. I usually do that. And don't forget underneath. So it's a little tap and push pull. It's a, a tap and a pull, a tap and a pull, but very small, tiny little strokes. I tap it on, pounce it on, and then pull the brush to still give it that dry brush look. Okay, now again, you can do that two, three times. I'll do it one more time. Yeah, the second time makes a big difference. Okay, but I'll just do that on the top so you get the idea. See, a lot of shadows here today. Okay, now the dots I do at the very end because I do them with the back end of the brush and the uh, dots stay wet for a long time. So you don't want to handle it after you do the dots. Okay, so what should we go to next? I guess we can go to the yellow. Now, because I have the blue in the brush, I'm gonna take another brush. Now, if you don't have another brush, if you wash your brush, you could, because you can't get the blue out to go back to the yellow or back and forth between colors, make sure that you let it dry before you go and start doing it again. And really dry it really well with paper towels, but it's always good to let it dry for a couple of hours. Or to have a lot of dry brushing brushes like I have here. Okay, so I'm going to do the yellow, and the yellow, I have a clean brush, so I will achieve the yellow on the piece faster than if I worked it into the hairs of a brush that had a lot of other color in it. So the yellow is on this flower here, and again, I'm going to do the middle. Now, yellow is one of the hardest colors to dry brush with. I don't know if the pigment's not strong enough. It takes a long time to build up your color. And the bottom of the mushroom, the stem. Now, again, here we have a smooth area. So I'm going to go down, see how I'm doing that, and it's going to look very wishy-washy when you first start out, but if you paint it on, it's a completely different look. It's not a look that I like, but that's up to you. It's your piece. I always say you are the artist, and you do it however you would like. So I'm going to do a second coat on the flower first. See, each time you do it, how the color builds up. And I'll do a second coat on the mushroom stem. So you have a tendency to pull in from the outer edge toward the center or go up and down if you have a small enough brush. And I'm going to do it one more time because I think the yellow really needs three times at least. And if it's, okay, another thing, if it's lifting up as you're doing it, you have too much paint in your brush. It's too wet, the application you put on before. So it has to dry. That's why it's very important to take a lot of it out of the brush. All right, I'm gonna stop at that. You can do as many coats as you would like to do, but we're getting there, right? Go do the flower again, give it a little more yellow. I don't think I have yellow anywhere else. Oh, I see yellow down under the step. Down here I did yellow. But you have so many different colors. Use your imagination and do whatever colors you would like. Normally, my friends all laugh at me because they say I'm a very monotone person. I like one or two colors on a piece with shades of those colors. So this has a lot of color for me, but I love it. I love it. Sometimes you take yourself, uh, put yourself out of the box and, and do something contrary to what you usually like, and, and it, it opens up a whole new avenue for you. You know, I think it really looks cool. It's a great piece, great piece. Okay, but you do need a couple of coats on the yellow. Just keep that in mind. I'll just stop with this one coat, but that's down there. Okay, so we're getting there. See, we're getting there. So now 
What could we go to next? I guess we'll go to the purple next. Do I have enough purple in here? What I do is so many of these bottles are empty. People tell me they're empty when they're trying to work with them, but there's always just enough to dry brush with. There's always just a little bit extra. And we're gonna keep the yellow brush clean. I'm gonna go back to the blue brush. Um, the turquoise was in it. Now I'm gonna just put the purple in it. So the purple is on the snail, the door, and the windows in the back. Anything else? I think that's it. So I'm going to start with the door because it's a flat area. Again, pull in from your edge. Come in, go over the knob. Doesn't matter. I gave you gold, I believe, so you'll be able to put some gold on there. This is a tap, tapping motion. I'm doing this now because it's a flat area. And I'm working, trying to work in from that edge. Now I want to do the, want to do the other side. I'm going to pull in from that edge in. And I see a little brown spot that I have there, which I can go back with my little brush and touch up with the brown. But I'm pulling in, very slightly pulling. That's mostly pouncing or dabbing or whatever you want to call it. And then on the top, I'm pulling down. And I see a white spot that I had in there too and I just touched it up with the purple. Okay, so that's one coat. It gets a lot stronger when you do a couple of coats. Do the window again dab pull down from the outer edge in pull in pull up pull down pull to the right pull to the left now if you want to go into the windows you can or if you have enough brown in there you can just leave the browns I could pull it in a little bit okay so there's purple on there and now we have to do the purple snail. And because he's flat also, he's gonna be done in a pouncing motion. And remember to pull away from the pumpkin. Go to the edge. Let's see if I can show you what I'm doing. Go to the edge and pull in this way to the center of the snail. Now when you get here, you have to be a little careful not to get it all over the blue. And when you get to the snail in here, you can um, go across the grain if you want. I think I did a little bit more on him, but if you want to keep the brown in the crevices, you go back to more of a dry brushing motion so that the brown stays in the crevices of the snail. Okay. Again, we're going to start with the door. Do my second coat. Oh, wow, what a difference. Look at the difference in the color on that door under the handle where I started the second coat. Makes such a difference. You really need to twist your piece, turn it around so your brush doesn't get onto the blue. All right, so I've got that on there. And then the window again in the back, we'll do that a second time. Like I said, you should be neater, take your time more. This is just for instructional purposes. And a second coat on the snail. And you know, if you ever have any questions, just uh, message me either on Facebook or right here on YouTube. You can type in any questions that you have. On Facebook, it's also under Rosemary Ceramics. Also, if any of you haven't subscribed to me, I would appreciate if you subscribe here on YouTube. I've reached almost 900 subscribers, and my goal is to reach 1,000. So I would love to hear from all of you. And it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, so there's that one. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do is go back to my yellow brush. I'm going to put a little white in my yellow brush and see if I can hit the edge of that flower again and get that white a little more vivid. Sometimes these brushes shed, so I just pull the hairs out of them. I'm going to go back to the white and make my white more vivid. See that one little petal I did? It's brighter. Again, coming down from the top, up from the bottom, toward the center. Now I got it on my roof here. Just blend it out. And I believe I did a, a little white center also. You can, oh, I did a purple center. You can do a purple center. 
I still have purple in one of my brushes. Okay, I get a little purple center on that. Can you see it on the yellow flower? All right, where was I? I'm gonna put the white in the brush again and do the edge of the blue flower. Even if it has a little yellow in it, it's not gonna matter. Where are we? The, the blue flower. I want my white to be nice and sharp. And yeah, it's a little yellow. I'll just keep going back over it. Okay, see it there? You have to do it a couple of times to get rid of the, um, the color that's in your brush. If it's coming up yellow, just keep redoing it and it'll be fine. Okay, so where are we? Um, I guess we have to go to the green now. So we're gonna be using, let me close this one up. We're gonna be using this medium green. It's called Country Sage and it's Mako's. Again, like I said, I work out of the caps. And I'm gonna take my, hmm, do I wanna use this? I guess I will. I'm gonna take my big brush and yeah, work the orange out right away. Take most of it out. You have a lot of crevices on here. So with a very gentle touch, go across the grain. See how that's looking? Now eventually I do it a little more solid, but not too solid, because I still want to keep the brown showing in between these sections of the roof and, and a little bit showing in the burlapy look that's on this roof. So now as, as I feel the brush having less paint in it, I press a little bit harder, but I always start out with a light hand. And now that one brush load, because it's such a big brush also, is doing the entire roof one coat. Now I have to remember to get underneath. Now I'm just going to ignore the fact that I missed that spot there and just put the green on it for now. I don't think it's going to matter now. We covered it right up. See how we covered it right up? And try not to get it on the house by pulling it out or coming across and then pulling it out. Turn it upside down to work on it so you could see what you're doing under here. And another white spot. So you see, I, I have that happen too. It's hard when you base coat something. You think you have all the crevices covered, but when they're wet, you can't tell whether they're, it's just the wet look or you've missed a spot. So there's always going back and touching up. What did I do under here? Hmm. Oh, that's that. I see. Okay. Okay, so that's one coat. But you see how much more vivid mine is? I'm going to be doing a second coat. And then you can put a little yellow in your brush to highlight the edges. Okay, so a second coat. Very light hand on the second coat. Like I said, I have a very big brush here. So it accumulates a lot of paint in it, but look at the difference in this versus this. Okay, so two coats is good. If you want to do three, you can do three. Hmm. And you know what? You might as well put it right on the snail too, and then we'll lighten him up. because I'm using a big brush, that one brush load just did the whole house, the whole roof. And, you know, I could go back underneath again and, and do a second coat underneath and get that under there. Okay. All righty. Now, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of yellow in my brush and try to change the color of the snail. Now, I don't know if I gave you another color. If I gave you a lime color, I'm not, I don't remember. You could use that to lighten the snail. It's called line burst, but all you have to do is put a little yellow in your brush and you get a line color. And then we can lighten the snail and make him look different and stand out. 
Yes, yeah, how he's different already. I'll do it one more time. A little bit of yellow. Now the yellow again is with the green in the brush. And I think I did even more yellow underneath those little dots. I don't know what they are, but made them stand out. And look how nice he looks when he's lighter. All right, and you can keep doing it as much as you want. A little bit of the green is in the brush already. So I'm just putting the yellow in the brush. Yeah, he really stands out now, okay? Now also what you can do with the yellow, I don't know if you can see this, but I highlighted the edge of the roof leaves. So when you do that, you come in from the edge like so. You can see that. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. If it gets to be too much yellow in your brush, just put another little dab of the green. You can see it on the edge there. Everything you do enhances the final look. Sometimes you don't even see it, but it's part of the overall finish. Okay, so you can see the difference in that little edge there. Okay, what's next? What did we do next? Uh, this brown is medium mocha. I'm gonna close up the green. I'm always afraid of these spilling paints all over the place, so I close them up as I go along. Uh, the brown, you need very, very little of the brown. I'm gonna take my purple brush put brown in. I put a lot of brown in it to get rid of the purple. And it's only a highlight, so I don't think it's gonna matter that much. Yeah, it got rid of it. So you see how dark mine is and how much lighter this one is? So you go against the grain. You wanna keep the dark brown showing in the crevices. So go from the bottom up and then across the top. Whenever you have crevices going in a direction, you go the opposite direction or crisscross it so you don't get lines. If you go with the grain, you're gonna be filling in your crevices and dry brushing is leaving the darker color in the crevices. And you don't always have to start out with brown. If you were doing leaves and you wanted to start out with a very dark green, you can put a, a lighter green over, you can put red over leaves, orange, yellow, purple, but you can start out with a green. If you're doing clothes on it, on a, on a figure, you start out with a, let's say you wanted a blue, you can start out with a dark blue and then just dry brush a lighter blue. There's another spot that I missed. Okay, but you see what I'm getting at? This is, um, makes the stem, all of this look much nicer. And this is the second time I just started it on the back. And again, the second time is the, changer that really makes it look much better and this is called medium mocha and you, when you work with any colors you, you have a tendency to graduate toward colors that you like the way they look over and over again like for the summer i was using uh, and if those of you who've watched my videos i was using a lot of uh, gare had a line of paints of uh, their party paints which they're not manufacturing right now but i used a lot of their um, what were the colors again? It was light teal, which is like, you know, very light teal. There was like a salmon color. And I forgot what the other one was, but they were beautiful colors. And I just used them over and over on many of the pieces that I did. So it's the same thing with these. I mean, I love the country sage. Beautiful color, beautiful color. Um, you know, I use a lot of their colors. I do pretty much use their dewdrop blue, their... 368 Makos, uh, which is um, dusty violet. But you do get to like like certain colors. Halloween, I always like purples. Purples and turquoise. I always love purple and turquoise. Now, I also did the top of the roof in the green, which I have to go back to. 
because I realized I didn't do it. Okay, so that's why it's always good to have a lot of brushes. And people say change my water, which we're not using today. Change my towel. I just use the same paper towel. The paint dries on it, so you can go right over it or turn it over and use the other side or flip it around and, you know, you can get plenty of use out of it. So let's get this above the door. And on this one, I did this swirl here in the green, but you can do it in the brown if you want. And this is a little more difficult and I have such a big brush, but you see I'm coming in from the outer edge, working in, not onto the pumpkin, working away from my flower. This is a little more difficult when you get down to the point here. So you might have to go to a smaller brush and then turn it upside down and get it here. Okay, so I'm not gonna keep doing it. You get the idea of what I'm doing. You can highlight this leaf with a little bit of yellow in your brush also. Now the other thing we have to do is the little ladybugs. I'll take my red out again. And that I'm doing with a brush you do wash, you know, immediately. It's just a little round, soft nylon brush. Where are we? Oh, I see I missed a piece here. This piece uh, uh, here by the flower, I did that in the same brown that I have up here, the uh, medium mocha, the lighter brown over the darker brown on each of these pieces. This one here and this one here coming from the flowers. Now, ladybugs, we have one, there's a ladybug there. I put a little bit of water in my brush just to make the color spread out better, but you have to be very careful. Don't put too much water in your brush. And when I'm working on a small area, I have a tendency to put a little water in my brush. It makes the paint move a lot easier. So that one, what else do we have a ladybug? We have a ladybug, oh, we have two ladybugs on the front. In that case, we have one up here. Now I'm painting around the center line because the center line is staying with the brown in it. Or you can go back and put a, I don't know if you could really see that. You could go back and you could put a black line in it with a very fine brush. But if you work and just paint the two sides of the ladybug, there is a brown, there should be a brown line in the middle from your base coat of brown if you dry brush the pumpkin properly. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you can see it here, but you can go back with the black and paint that in. All right, that's okay. Was, I think that was it. Are there only three ladybugs? One, two, three ladybugs. Okay. Now with a marker, you can go in and write, after you spray it though, after you seal it, the word welcome, you can do an I on the snail. Uh, this little piece on top of the flower here, I did in green, which I didn't do it on this one, but I did it in green. And I need to, I need to take like a smaller brush, like even this little brush, even though it's not a dry brushing brush, you can pull it like a dry brushing brush, just pull it across and it'll work. When you need to get into a small area, just don't put a lot of paint in your brush and don't paint it solid. And it'll have that same look like dry brushing. Okay, we're getting there, right? Now we have, I believe I did a gold doorknob and hinges. And you should have a real tiny brush for this. I, I have just this brush, which hopefully will work. A little tiny, tiny amount in the brush. And I just kind of just lightly highlight the hinges. If you have very little in the brush, you're just dry brushing across the little metal area there and then the knob i just did the center part of the knob in the gold but it's up to you how much of it you want to do you could even paint that outside area a different color but i only just did it on the center part and then on the hinges okay now we want to go back with the yellow and do these little dots now if you have a toothpick it might be a good idea to just take a toothpick and do these little dots underneath. I'm doing it with the brush. I mean, I'm putting nothing in the brush, but a toothpick would do it too. 
I am getting a little bit onto the roof, so I think a toothpick would probably be better. And then his eye also can be done with a marker. Go around the back and do the back. Also, if you have a flat end, I mean an end of a very pointy brush, the handle of it, you can also do these with that. got a little bit on his body. I take a little water in my brush and just pull it right out. You can, if you go out of the lines and you get it when it, you first do it, you can pretty much pull it right off with a little bit of water. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I think I did a little on his face too, a little bit of yellow, but not painted. I mean, I'm putting a little bit in this brush and I'm taking it all out. I just want to highlight his face. That way, really nothing. Let me do it a second time. I don't know if you could see the difference in his face. A little bit. You could see it on here more. And again, his eyes can be done with the marker. What did I miss? Oh, the dots on the um, on the snail. Okay, handle of the brush. Have a brush that's not too big. Do it on a piece of paper first to see the size of the dots you're getting. And don't do them too close together. I tried to follow the shell shape, shell shape, going around. They're about a half an inch apart. So I'm doing, I'm coming into this, into the center. See how I did that? Follow the, the scroll shape. And then just go around and put a couple here. And then on the back, just put a few on the back. You have to dip at least every two dots because if you keep doing dots without dipping, your dots get smaller and smaller. Okay, so I did the back. All right, so we got that done. Now the only other thing that I did do is I put glitter on my leaf, leaf area. I put glitter on the windows. I put glitter on the top of the mushroom and on the flowers. I didn't do everything and on, 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 the, on the, all the green and then on the two flowers, and then on the window. That's the only areas that I did. I want the glitter to stand out from the um, less glittery background of other areas. I want other areas not to be as glitter. If you glitter the whole thing, it's okay, but like I said, it's your choice, it's your piece. I don't like doing that. I like to have the pumpkin dull, the leaves shiny. I think it adds contrast and it draws your eye, but it's your piece, so it's up to you. Now, the glitter that I gave you is one of the best glitters that's out on the market today. It's um, Duncan Sparklers, Mako's making it now, brush on glitter. It's also a sealer. It is great, great to work with. I don't know where it's available, probably online on any of your ceramic uh, companies. I don't know if Amazon did have it at one time, but it was very expensive. I just looked it up the other day. It was $4.65 a bottle and things are getting, everything's getting so expensive. You take a soft brush for this, it will go on white, but it will dry clear. I'll start one coat so you can see it. So you see it is white, but don't, don't just leave it laying there. Pull, pull it out. To me, less is more, so I, I don't do a lot. All right, that was one brush load and a little dip for more that did that whole side. And don't forget under your roof. All right, so now I just have it on the top. So it looks a little white, but it will dry clear. And then we'll put a little bit on the flower. What color did I do in the center of the flower? Oh, white. I guess we could go back and do that. Right now, I'm just putting the glitter on. Oh, I forgot the dots on the top of the mushroom. Let's go back and do that. Let me just do the flowers and then the leaf above the door. And when you do the ladybug, when you do the marker here, unless you have black paint, you do the welcome and do the heads of the ladybugs. Okay, you could do them with the marker. And I put little dots on his back. 
See that? And do the head, and I do, you can do the line down the middle and the little, little dots, and you can do that with a toothpick. All right, so I did that. There's the glitter. All right, I think we got everything done except the uh, dots on the mushroom, and they're done in the yellow. Splash that out, and I do some dots on. And they don't have to be the yellow, and you can do them in whatever color you want. So I'm going to try to stick to just the dots that are there. And if my brush handle is not big enough, I circle it. I put it down and I rotate it around to get the dots a little larger. If I want them smaller, I just put it as it is and not circle it. Oop, putting my hand in the, in the glitter. And where you can't see the dots, just ad lib them. Put them in wherever you want. Because some of them have worn away. Okay, there we go. And I believe that that's my finished piece. Um, I could see here that my yellow is a little sharper on this one, so we could go back and, although there's the yellow is pretty much there. And don't forget, this has white still drying on it, so that will glitter up even nicer. All right. It's adorable. I love this piece. They have another one, too, that's a little bit taller and has a uh, dragonfly on it. But I wanted, I wanted to show you two other pieces that I'm doing at some of the libraries. This is Gare's Witch's Lair. And I don't know if you could see the lights in it. I have the fairy lights in it. Sometimes it's they're hard to see in the daylight. This is an adorable piece, and this is started in the brown on the whole bottom and just dry brushed over it. On the top, I started with purple. I dry brushed the edges in a little red. That's a cute piece. I'm gonna be doing a video on this also. And But this is my favorite piece that Gare came out with this year. This is magnificent. Look at this piece. Isn't this great? And this has electric. This lights up with electric, which I don't have plugged in right now, but it's a fantastic piece, and I've sold so many of them, and. Uh, Love it. Just love it. I just won't ship this piece. So if any of you who are watching me from, you know, outside of my area, I won't ship it. I think it's a little bit too fragile to ship. And I just went to the, the dollar store and I bought, which is now a dollar and a quarter store, and I bought some little tchotchkes to add on. I, I, you know, you could decorate it however you would like. Okay. So that's it, I believe, for this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Please subscribe to me here on YouTube. Uh, you could follow my page on Rosemary Ceramics on Facebook also. And I hope to see you again real soon. And happy Halloween. Thank you.